I'd like to do an example of an integral in polar coordinates, and through this example I'll illustrate kind of the general ideas behind converting from an integral in Cartesian to an integral in polar coordinates. So uh, the example will just be this. Let's integrate the function x over this region. This region is a, a portion of an annulus. Now if you try to set this integral up in Cartesian coordinates, you're not going to have a very good time, because you'll notice that if you try to define the y bounds, for instance, you have to start at a different place here and there. So you have to split it up into actually two separate integrals. One which gives the integral over where this is the bottom bound, and then another where this is the bottom bound. Same thing if you try to start with x, you'll have to split it up. But, uh, but this is actually a really nice region in polar coordinates. This is a polar box. Let's look at uh, what the bounds are of this thing in polar coordinates. So I start out with a radius of 1, that's r equals 1, and I go out to a radius of 2. No matter where I am in theta, I have to go out exactly to a radius of 2. So that means that r goes between 1 and 2. On the other hand, theta starts here and swings around until it gets to pi over 2. And so theta goes between 0 and pi over 2. So this, actually, this portion of an annulus is a box in polar coordinates, a polar box. So it's a really nice region in polar coordinates. Now if we just charge on ahead and try to set up this integral in polar coordinates, I just want to integrate over this box. So I would say, let's say that r starts at 1 and ends at 2. Let's say that theta starts at 0 and ends at pi over 2. And I want to integrate x and I want to go dr uh, d theta. Great. You might be a little worried because I've got an x in here. Well, x is r cos theta in polar coordinates, so uh, I can just replace x with r cos theta. Done, right? Wrong. This is not correct. Okay, And the reason is subtle. So let me say wrong, wrong. The reason is subtle. Here's what it is. When I went from this integral to the, to the actual uh, integral that I can evaluate in terms of the coordinates I'm using, I just sort of willy-nilly took dA and called it dr d theta. But dA is different in polar coordinates. Let's talk about what dA is. In Cartesian coordinates, dA is the small resulting wiggle in area when I wiggle each of the coordinates. So if I wiggle x a little bit, an amount dx, I wiggle y a little bit, an amount dy, the resulting wiggle in the area is the product dx times dy, which is this box dA. So I have dA equals dx dy. And this should be familiar. When we set up our integrals, usually we end up with a dx and a dy on the right-hand side, and we integrate with respect to x and y. On the other hand, when I wiggle theta a little bit, and I wiggle r a little bit, I get, again, a little wiggle in the area, dA. But this wiggle is a little different, because it actually depends on the value of r. I get a bigger wiggle if r is big, and a smaller wiggle if r is small. Let's figure out what this thing is. Well, this wiggle right here is dr. This wiggle corresponding to the wiggle in theta is r d theta. And so assuming this is approximately a box, which is not quite, but again, this is an infinitesimal thing, so all of these curved lines become straight as we shrink everything down, dA is actually r dr d theta. It's dr times r d theta. So that's what would fix this get rid of this dr d theta and make it r dr d theta. Now, I'm not wrong. I am now right. This is the way to evaluate this integral in polar coordinates. At this point, it's a straightforward exercise in taking antiderivatives with respect to r, evaluating them from 2 minus 1, and then antiderivatives with respect to theta, evaluating them at pi over 2 and subtracting the evaluation at 0.